A few days ago, I sent a thank you note to one of the benefactors who shared a generous amount to our community pantries. She texted me back and she said, Bishop, please don't thank me. I should be the one thanking you for giving me the opportunity to share what I have with the less fortunate through your community pantries. I would not know how to do it by myself. You know, every now and then, I get to meet givers of this kind who leave me speechless and very deeply edified. Perhaps this is what our readings today are trying to impart to us about sincere giving, about cheerful giving. They remind me of St. Paul who also said in the second letter to the Corinthians chapter 9 verses 6 to 7, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each must do as already determined, without sadness or pressure, because God loves a cheerful giver. That's wonderful. Because God loves a cheerful giver. Many years ago, when I was still a seminarian, we had Mother Teresa of Calcutta as visitor at the Loyola School of Theology. When she came up on the stage, she literally disappeared behind the regular-sized podium because she was much smaller than we thought she was. Somebody ran immediately to get a platform on which she could stand so that she could become visible from the podium. Well, she dutifully went up that platform and we could see her only up to her nose. Maliit pa rin. And so, the MC just pulled out the microphone and gave it to her. And she spoke right in front of the podium instead. What did she share about? She shared about giving and its many forms. She reflected on the common human tendency to give with all sorts of conditions. At some point, she even made us laugh when she spoke about people who give not just with strings, but with ropes and chains attached to the gifts. She warned us about those gifts. She mentioned also about people who can give only the things that they want to throw away already. She said, the first challenge is to learn to give until it hurts. That became a byword in those times, quoted from Mother Teresa, give until it hurts meaning that we learn to give even from our need. Like the story of the widow's might in the gospel. But she said, later on, she added this, if it hurts when you give, it means there is still a certain reluctance and heaviness of heart and that deprives the giver of the true joy of giving. And so, later on, she revised from give until it hurts 
to give until it no longer hurts. Give until it no longer hurts. And like I told you, she looked so small, but as we listened to her, it's like she started to grow big in our sight, or maybe in the sight of God. She was the person who came to my mind when I saw an interesting video this morning. The video is about an 82-year-old woman who still dared to finish college in her late senior years. Imagine college student ka, ang classmate mo, 82 years old na. She was asked by her professor on the last day of their class to share some words of wisdom. She stood gamely upon her professor's request, still looking zestful and glamorous. At the end of her little speech, which got the young graduates really absorbed, the 82-year-old woman said, Don't you ever forget this. We make a living by what we get. But we make a life by what we give. Ganda nun, eh? We make a living by what we get. But we make a life by what we give. Our first reading from the book of Sirach today is saying something like that also. He says, glorify the Lord generously and do not be stingy with the first fruits of your hands. With every gift, show a cheerful face and dedicate your offering always with gladness. Give as the Most High has given you and as generously as you can. For the Lord is the one who repays and he will repay you sevenfold. You see, part of human nature is the tendency for the left hand to know what your right hand is doing, meaning to give only on the condition that we get something in exchange. Even Peter was not exempted from that tendency. In the gospel today, Peter is being very candid, you know, directly telling Jesus what he has given up in order to follow Jesus. And very straightforward about expressing his expectation to get something in return. And you must note the humor in what Jesus says in reply. Sabi ni Jesus, there is no one who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands. Pero dinagdag niya and a lot of persecution and eternal life in the age to come. Marunong talaga magbiro si Jesus. And he ends by saying, the first will be last and the last will be first. In short, wag mo namang ipautang, sa, ipautang na loob sa Diyos. Huwag natin ipapautang sa, ipautang na loob sa Diyos ang ating pagmamagandang loob sa kapwa. You don't hold God in a debt of gratitude because you can never outdo God in generosity. St. Ignatius of Loyola taught the Jesuits a prayer about generous giving. It is the prayer that we all must learn, especially when our giving still hurts or when we tend to be too conditional about our giving. 
the prayer says, Dearest Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as I should, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heal the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and ask not for reward. Save that of knowing that I do your most holy will. He says, you labor without expecting anything in reward. But it's very funny. He still communicates a reward that he expects. Isang gantimpala lang hinihiling ko, ang sabi niya. Na sana wala akong ibang gagawin, kundi ang loob mo, your most holy will.